So in this video, we'll talk about some really interesting math tricks, sometimes also called math magic tricks, that just seem strange and it's not clear why they should work or what's going on. So we'll show them, but then we'll also explain exactly how they're working. And in most cases, that means you can make up your own tricks in the same way as we're doing here. So the three we're gonna be looking at is, one I'm calling the answer is two. So let's start with that one and we'll jump right into it. So the way this problem works is you start by asking the person to think of any number they want. So for this one, I thought of the number five. Next, you multiply it by three, which gives us 15. Then you add six to that, which is 21. And finally, you divide by three, which is seven. Now you take the number you just got, seven, and subtract the number you started with, five, and you get two. And as the title of this problem suggests, the answer is always going to be two. It had nothing to do with me starting with the number five. And just as a quick proof of this, I went ahead and did it again, starting with the number eight. So if we take the number eight, we multiply it by three, it gives us 24. We add six, it gives us 30. Divide by three and we get 10. And again, subtract what we started with, 10 minus eight gives us two once again. And this always works. It doesn't matter if you do a single digit number or double or bigger, they're all gonna work. So what is it that's going on here? The easiest way to, to see this is rather than actually picking a number, just start with x. So if we take x and we multiply it by three, that's now three x. If you add six, that's three x plus six. Now here's where it starts to actually get interesting and something is happening. So if we divide by three, Okay, so something should already look suspicious. I mean, earlier we multiplied by three and now we're dividing by three, right? We can't just cancel the threes out right away because we've got that plus six, but what we can do is factor that three out. And if you do that on the top, you do have your two threes that are going to cancel. And once you cancel those, you're left with just X plus two. So at this point, you can kind of see that the problem is basically done. Remember what the problem said was take what you just got which originally looked like three X plus six over three. But once we simplified it, we just had X plus two. So we take that and we subtract the number we started with, which was X. And yes, that just leaves us with the two. So you notice there's two things going on. One is that something we do at the start, multiplying by three, we undo that later. But the other thing is we know that six is three times two. So when we cancel out that three, the two is all that's left, and later we'll just subtract it, uh, the x, and we'll only be left with that two. So for this one, I encourage you to try to make your own versions of these problems. If rather than trying to go forward, if instead you worked backwards by saying what number you wanted to start with, you could go ahead and make this work for any number you want. And in fact, you could even change it so the steps aren't the same. You no longer have to multiply by three. You no longer have to add six. You can make up your own steps that'll work for any problem. So I highly encourage you to give it a try. If you come up with a good one, post in the comments below and let us see it. Okay, let's go on to the next problem. This next problem I'm calling any three digit number becomes 37. So how it works is take any three digit number where all three digits are the same. So for example, 111, right? 111. You could also take 222, 333, any three digit number like this would work. Next, add up the digits. So in this case, it's 111. So we add up one plus one plus one and that gives us three. Finally, take your original number, so the 111, and divide it by what you got in step two. So we started with 111 in step two and we added up the digits, we got three, so we divide those two and we get 37. And as the title of the problem suggests, you're always gonna end up with 37, even if you had done 222 or 333 or whatever number you started with. So again, let's, let's look into what's going on here. So the first thing to note here is we just did this for 111, but notice if you took any three digit number like they're asking for, 222, 333, et cetera, these are all just 111 times something. In other words, they're a multiple of 111. So let's just do an example. So 777 is seven times 111, seven times 111. So what happens in that second step when we add up the digits? Well, seven plus seven plus seven, 
Of course, we can factor out the seven there and we get seven times one plus one plus one. In other words, we get seven times three. And this is gonna be really important because it's just gonna be using what we did in that last example. Remember for the last step, you take your original number, which for this one was 777, and you divide it by what you got uh, from step two. Now again, we use what we had before, right? 777 is just seven times 111. Of course, we can see the sevens are gonna cancel each other out. What about what's left? Well, we know from the previous slide that 111 divided by three is 37. So there's actually no magic here. Really all that's going on is we're using the fact that 111 divided by three is 37. And that's what makes this work for any number you want. So someone noticed it for 111 and then they realized, hey, we can do this for anyone because you're just multiplying 111 by another digit. I encourage you to see if you can do a similar thing for four digit numbers or some other one. See if that works as well. And again, if you find something interesting, please post in the comments below so we can all see it. Okay, let's go on to the last one. So this one I'm calling six digits become three. And I think from the math perspective, this one's the most interesting. So how does this work? Well, you start with any three digit number you want. Unlike the last problem, they don't need to be repeating digits or anything. Pick any three digit number you want. I picked 451, but you can do it with anyone. Next, write it twice to make it a six digit number. So I write 451, 451. In other words, 451,451. So now I've got a six digit number. Now take what you got and divide it by seven, 11, and 13 in any order you want. You can first divide by seven, then divide by 11, then 13. You can do backwards, it doesn't matter. Whatever answer you get is gonna be the number you started with. So as you can see, if you have a calculator or you can just trust my calculations here, we get 451, the number we started with. So how's that work? That's kind of surprising. We're doing a weird thing. We're taking 451 and we're writing it back to back and then we're dividing by these same three numbers and yet we end up with the original number. That's kind of a strange trick. So let's break it down. So any three digit number in the world has a ones place, a tens place, and a hundreds place, right? That's what it means to be a three digit number. So for example, 451 is four in the hundreds place, five in the tens place, one in the ones place. The way we can express that mathematically is saying that means this number is four times 100 plus five times 10 plus one. If you wanna double check that, you can make sure it adds up, but that's what it means to say something's in the hundreds place or the tens place or the ones place. So what's going on when we put 451 twice, right? When we turn it into 451,451? Well, let's do the same thing. Now the four at the front is in the hundred thousands place, right? Cause it's 400,000. The five is in the 10 thousands place and so forth. So if we expand it all out that way, this is what we end up with. Okay, so let's notice something here. Of course, the four is appearing twice, the five is appearing twice, the one is appearing twice. But what do we notice? Let's start with the one. I think that's the easiest way to see it. So at the start, all the way at the right, the one is just a one. But then the next time we see it, we're multiplying it by 1,000. So that's what changed. How about the five? First, the five was multiplied by 10, but now as we look to the left, we turn it into 10,000. In other words, we also multiplied it by 1,000. Same thing with the four, the four there. It starts as a 100, it turns into 100,000. In other words, we multiplied it by 1,000. So this 451 at the start is really the same as the original one, but I multiplied it by 1,000. And that makes sense because it's moving them into the hundreds, tens, and thousands place. So if we factor out that 1,000, this is what we have. And then at that point, we can collect like terms because there's a four times 100, a five times 10, and a one on both sides. We have a thousand of them on the left, and we have one of them on the right. So if we collect like terms, we get 1,001 times the original thing, four times 100 plus five times 10 plus one. And now we can go ahead and compress this back. Right? Rather than writing in this expanded form, we can just write that as 451. Okay, so what did we notice? We noticed that taking 451,451 is really just the original number, 451, 
times 1001. That actually finishes the trick because what the trick is, is that 1001, if you factor it, is just seven times 11 times 13, right? That was the numbers we were dividing by in order to make this trick work. We divided by seven, 11, and 13. So when we divide by seven, 11, and 13, it cancels out that 1001, and all we're left with is the original number we started with, 451. So again, this is one I encourage you to try doing something a little different. Can you make this work uh, if you take a two-digit number and something like that? What if you take a bigger one? I encourage you to play around and see if you find anything cool. And as usual, if so, please post in the comments below so we can all check it out. All right, everyone, that's the end of the math tricks for today. If you've seen other cool math tricks that you want to know how they work, please post them below and we can see about putting them in a video. All right, everyone, have a good one.